This is a little kitty somebody got from a shelter. Yes, what did you say your name was? One of the most common um, afflictions of kitties are that come from the shelter. One is um, upper respiratory um, problems where they might have swollen, runny eyes, sneezing. But this kitty doesn't have it. But this kitty has ringworm. And if you look at that paw, it's crusty, the hair is gone. And it's not in a ring, but it's the hair's all gone in a certain area, a patch of it. Ringworm is not a worm. It's not a worm with a bell. Ringworm, get it? It's a fungus that grows on the hair shafts and makes the hair shafts brittle and they fall off. And when we can either culture it or we can shine a light on it, and in this case, as you'll see, the, the light makes it glow apple green, and that's a good diagnosis. So for all of you out there that wonder, wonder how we diagnose it, we also grow it in culture, but when it grows that, when it glows like that, there's, and on the hair shafts like it's doing, there's no need to grow it in culture. Kitten, we, we fill up a, a pan with warm water, and then I hand it to my trusty assistant and she will put the kitten down. Now some will just freak out, but you can see we're bathing first. In fact, I'll even help. We're bathing first because we want to get some of the, the crust off and the oil off the skin so that the, the medication can sink in. And look at how much fun we're having. Did you know if you use a white pan like this and have soapy water, you can look for fleas in the water, and we'll look. We'll see if we see any for you. That's one way to see if your animal, your your dog or your cat has fleas. You either go in the sink or the bathtub, and then you look around afterwards, and sometimes you'll see fleas. Nope. nope. Okay, we're, we're gonna rinse now. Get ready to rinse. There we go. See, it's not too hard to bathe, bathe the cat. Of course, this one isn't freaking out too much. You just gotta be very gentle. And then sometimes if they start to freak out, you can always hold them by the scruff and then they will, they will just remain motionless. Now that isn't cruel. That's a natural defense. When mom carries them around, see how she just kind of gets paralyzed? That's a normal thing for them. It's like an anesthetic. So our dilution of this, we're going to use a Lime Plus dip for dogs and cats. And we're going to put two ounces per gallon of water or one ounce per half a gallon. So we're going to do that. And we're going to put a half a gallon of water into the pan. And then we're going to put one ounce of, of the fluid. So what we're doing is we're, the normal dose for this is two out, is four ounces per gallon. But we're going to use two ounces per gallon because it's a kitten and it smells really bad. So you have to use a very ventilated area and use gloves. I don't have gloves, but Isabel's going to do the dipping. Then she's going to pour the half ounce, or I'm sorry, one ounce per, per half gallon, which would be two ounces per gallon. And then we're going to mix it up really good so it looks like bloody urine, but it's not really bloody urine, a very concentrated urine. You never want to have that, that kind of urine. And then you're going to hand is about the little kitty, and she's going to dip it into the lime sulfur. So this immediately kills, well, it doesn't immediately, but this will kill the ringworm fungus. And cats can have ringworm fungus everywhere. Um, they can have it on the back and they can have it on the ears and on the face and underneath. So this method will take care of all of it. You can also give uh, a kitty or an older cat fluconazole or atraconazole and you can do it orally for several months but uh, this is one of the preferred methods for kittens along along with that. So we're going to try this. I've had really good luck with lime sulfur dips and we're going to try this um, once a week or twice a week, probably once a week for a couple months, if needed. 
and uh, usually most kitties once dip once they're dipped two or three four times especially short-haired cats uh, they'll get over it now long-haired cats and uh, purebred cats have a harder time getting over it some of them need to be shaved and dipped and put on the antifungal atroconazole and fluconazole and also possibly dip so just wanted to show you how this works now also this is not this is not uh, rinsed off after we do it. It's left on, so I always tell the client uh, their little one's going to have an odor a little bit, but the odor goes away quickly um, as they dry off. And as you can see, Isabel's also doing the head and the face, but she, you don't get it. In the, you don't get it in the eyes, and she's not doing. And then there's a little place under the chin too that she's going to get. So that's what happens with ringworms in cats. Uh, that's what happened when, with, with ringworm and cat. It's uh, usually a disease of sheltered kitties because there's a lot of cats close together and they, they, spread, they spread the ringworm uh, fungus and also viruses to each other. So that's why cats from the shelter often have runny eyes and are sneezing because it's just like, two, like a bunch of kids in school. One gets sick and then many get sick. Same thing with the ringworm fungus. It will... It will go from one kitten to the next. And sometimes, it's, it, if it's very concentrated, uh, people will get it too, or if it's very aggressive ringworm. Um, we've had one family that got a kitten from a shelter, and they all got it. But don't worry, that's not common. Usually kittens don't carry ringworm, and usually the family members don't get it at all. So don't let that deter you from going to the shelter and adopting a cute little kitten just like this family did. Please do it. Our little orphan animals need help. Have a great day. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, our little video and didn't uh, mind us torturing that poor little kitten. You can see that ringworm can be diagnosed by a woods lamp, and I also talked about culturing it in other videos. But when it glows like that, it's pretty, pretty good diagnosis. You can treat ringworm many ways. Sometimes if it's just a little patch, it'll go away. You can uh, get some myconazole ointment from the store and put it on little tiny patches and see if it'll go away. You can bathe an animal with uh, chlorhexidine or ketoconazole shampoos and that will get rid of ringworm. Or you can dip them in the lime sulfur dip. Your veterinarian also may need to diagnose and treat a flea allergy a staph infection, a yeast infection, or a severe fungal infection. And sometimes they're hard to diagnose and need treatment with the antifungals. Like I mentioned, um, fluconazole and atraconazole are two common antifungals that are used for ringworm. I just mentioned that you can try shampooing and dipping your animal plus putting ointment on it just for those of you that just can't afford a vet and I appreciate that it, we're so expensive and sometimes it's hard to get the money together to go but these videos are to show you um, other ways that are what it looks like and possibly ways that you could help out your animal and treat it just by shampooing it or dipping it always get them ch checked out if they're sick because if you have a little real little sick kitten and you put a concentrated dip on it then it may make it sick so you just make sure that um, make sure that your animal isn't too sick and you're not self-diagnosing something that dipping it or shampooing it won't help and may even hurt it but anyway hope you enjoyed it um, and have a great day